Well, our guest today wants to transform children in a profound way. Well, that's a lofty goal, isn't it? Especially, he wants to do this through online gaming. But moms, we all know how much time kids spend on playing games each day. So today, today we're talking about a Christian streaming platform that will teach morality and biblical values. Stay with us. Welcome to the Moms for America podcast. Each week, special guests tackle the issues facing the moms of America today. Discussions include personal stories and advice on how moms can build a strong foundation of faith, family, and freedom in their homes and country. Hey, moms, welcome to another podcast here. Debbie Corlett is your host. I'm so glad that you're back with us. We are here every week, inspiring, encouraging, and educating moms in their journey through motherhood. So right here at the top of the show, I always want to ask everyone, have you joined the movement? Are you a part of Moms for America? Well, how do I do that, Deb? Well, you just go to momsforamerica.us and you sign up. Uh, If you don't know what the movement is, we are moms uniting all across the country, fighting for faith family, freedom, and the Constitution. We are the ultimate support group for conservative moms. So please join us. We would absolutely love to have you a part of our family. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions or guests for our podcast, would you please email me, podcast at momsforamerica.net. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Again, moms, please check us out, Moms for America. We are here uh, helping you and all the moms across this country in their journey through motherhood. All righty, well, on to today's program. Another interesting topic (laughs) is facing us right here. Well, it's no secret, right, that kids love games. We all know that. They can play them for hours on their phones or their tablets. In fact, the average child spends over 50 hours a week on screens. If you suspect that many games today have maybe an adverse effect on users, Well, you're right. My guest today is Brent Dusing, and Brent is the founder of the Christian gaming platform, TruePlay. Well, welcome, Brent, to the Moms for America podcast. We're so glad to have you. Great to be with you. Hey, do you mind starting out here? You know, when when we have our dads on, just like we have our moms, we uh, ask them a little bit about their families. Are, Are you, tell us how many kids do you have? What is your world like? I got three kids. I've uh, been married. It'll be 20 years this August. Nice. And um, yeah, it's, fatherhood's been a wonderful thing. It's been a real, been a real blessing, been a really, uh, you know, when you become a parent, it really changes who you are because you're not just living for yourself. You're living for other people and you're thinking about, you know, you're making decisions based on what's best for them and their futures. And, uh, but it's been wonderful. I, I, I enjoy my kids. I enjoy, you know, spending time with them and uh, it's been fantastic. Well, too, just like you said, things are different when you become a parent. And obviously, as we have this discussion, this is, I'm sure, birthing out of you being a parent. So um, it does. It changes every aspect of our life. So let's talk a little bit about uh, gaming, video games, gaming platforms. Um, What's what's the typical content of games right now? Um, I mean, I have a 19-year-old. Actually, he sold his counsel. He just was kind of done with it but my other son kind of played a little bit more on games. Um, But it's evolved a lot and it's changed a lot, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, when I, so the first video games were, you know, kind of uh, arcade style games, you know, there was Pong and there were things like Pac-Man. I think there was a big watershed moment in 1985 or maybe 86 when the Nintendo Entertainment System came to people's homes. A lot of you listening may remember that if you're you're in your late 30s or, or your 40s. Because the Nintendo was was to video games what Star Wars was to movies. It was a step function of difference. Mm-hmm. And so you could get immersed into the world because the graphics were better and the gameplay was more advanced and and you know what what you could do and the types of styles of games that could be played. And then things have advanced from there, you know, obviously for for decades and decades later. Um, and so, you know, today, video games are is really a kind of a, a large genre. Um, that encompasses anything from playing video games on your PC, uh, on your console, on your phones, on your tablets. They're everywhere. (laughs) They're everywhere. But here's what a lot of parents don't realize. And I find particularly a lot of Christian parents don't realize. You know, if you think about cultural touchstones, so so when I was a kid, you know, I'm I'm in my 40s, 
the biggest thing was movies, right? The movies that were coming out in the theaters, that's what everybody was going to go see. That's what everybody was talking about. That was kind of the, right. if you will, kind of the cultural uh, conversation, right? The uh, the water cooler conversation. And in the in the te- in the teens last decade, that changed, right? It became prestige television. So shows like, you know, Breaking Bad or, or you know, Stranger Things or, or things like that, right? Right, right. But for the youngest generation, for children, for my children, for your children, for anybody who's got, if you've got kids in your house, it's games. More yes. time is spent on games than any other media form. More money was spent wow. on video games, just on phones and tablets. More money was spent there than on movies this year, last year, the year before that, the year before that, et cetera. So, yeah. so gaming has become um, really the, the number the one, product right? Like the number one form of entertainment. Yes, and also of course social interaction. So there's a lot of games mm-hmm. um, like, like Roblox, like Fortnite, uh, where kids do socialize and they do. There is a social component to being with your friends, playing with your friends, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about the fact, though, Brent, that a lot of kids now don't go outside? Because I know some parents that their kids are like oh, their entire social network is literally on games. Nobody plays outside. Nobody rides bikes. Nobody plays baseball. This has been obviously social activities outside have now become replaced with the game. Yeah. I think that, that, that that's true with any media form. I mean, I think there were certainly kids when books came about, they want to sit in the room and read books all day. I know there was problems with TV where kids would sit and watch TV all day. In fact, I know kids that did that. Um, so I think any media form, or is prone to make you want to, right. you know, sit in your house and do it. Now, has it become exacerbated because games are richer, or more interactive? And to your point, your friends are involved. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Does there have to be a balance? Yes. Should you, as a parent, be aware of the messages that your children are consuming through games? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Part of the problem is, you know, well, there are a lot of games that are benign. You know, there's Candy Crush and there's games, you know, NFL games and NBA games. Great, wonderful, go have fun. But then you get into games where there's a lot of sexual content, especially pushed on young kids, yeah. very, very violent content. I'm talking about like, I'm not talking about sword fights. I'm talking more about, you know, shooting police and running over, you know, prostitutes with cars and, um, or, you know, drug use or uh, really mm-hmm. demonic stuff. And yeah. so, the, the, so the problem is that messages get inculcated th- into these games mm-hmm. and then they get, you know, poured out onto children. And in fact, there, there have been games um, you know, there's a lawsuit going on right now uh, with Roblox where they're getting sued by a group of parents who said there was sexual predatory behavior on your game and you didn't do enough to stop it. I heard that. And, and yeah. that's what the allegation is. Yeah. So so there's a lot of concerned parents who are like, and in fact, I, I talked to somebody recently who's a, mm-hmm. a true play customer and she had a child who wanted to use a game. It was a very benign game, but there were ads in the game. And the ads right. had sexually inappropriate stuff. Yes. And she was flabbergasted because she didn't expect at all that it would be something that her child would be exposed to, right? Because right. you, you, you just don't think anybody would would cross that boundary. You think they'd respect the fact they're children. And the sad truth is that they don't respect right. that boundary at all. Yeah, yeah, that is another huge issue is that you may feel like there's playing a safe game. This is even I'm watching things on YouTube. You have no idea what the advertising is going to be. And, and, and a lot of us think they're just targeting the children anyway. So if they know that they've got a young audience, they're going to get in there with like an LBGTQ plus message or all kinds of different messages that should not be within child pro- programming. We see that in the schools even, you know, they're just yeah. putting things that do not belong. Um, um, what about, I wanted to ask you too, like, um, I know that violence has always been a huge, pro- not a huge problem, but a problem in in, in gaming sure. um, and dark messages. Um, what about the gender issue, the gender confusion? Is that coming into games now as well? It is. There are, there are games where that happens. And sometimes it's in the characters you play. Sometimes it's in the ads that you see. Um, and, and that is kind of getting, getting woven in. And again, our perspective at True Play is, look, it's inappropriate to talk to little kids about, you know, the sexual content. You know, yeah. if you're a parent, you want to talk to your kid, that's your business. But anyone else, it's astonishing to me that somebody would even think they have the right to have that conversation with someone else's five-year-old or, or eight-year-old. I mean, it's it's really something that mm. 10 years ago would have gotten you 
fired or banned if you try to do something like that. Right. You know, it, it's really astonishing that that people even try to push um, sexual content on children to me, but they do. Now, yeah, they sure do. And yeah. I think parents are becoming more and more aware um, from their classroom to the video games, to the yeah. television shows. We just really have to be, that's why you have such a great answer that we're going to talk about. But I'd also like to mention, um, there is a lot of, um, I think when kids separate themselves with maybe um, games that are violent or um, drug or killing, or I actually have now met a couple of people that told me that their children liked that they could go and be a boy or be a girl in some of these um, games. Like, there is anxiety, there is tension, there is um, a lot of things that kind of come from separating into a world that has negative uh, connotations, basically. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there, there's different, There, it kind of depends, I think, on what the root of the message is. And what I mean by is this, I grew up playing a game called Zelda. And in Zelda, a lot of you guys, if you listen to this, mm -hmm. you know, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. You play a knight, and in, in, in almost every version of the Zelda games, with a couple exceptions, your job is to go rescue the princess through fighting in a series of dungeons and eventually the main bad guy who's a, you know, some kind of a demon or a pig or a dragon, however he's depicted, um, and, and beat him and eventually win the game, right? And it's beautiful. And it's now, in a sense, that's role playing, right? Because what am I doing? I'm going in to, to you know, be courageous and do the right thing ultimately and, you know, gain my, you know, build up my attributes and ultimately go win. The so that is role playing in a sense, mm -hmm. right? I think the problem is when you get into again sexual content, very vi mm -hmm. you know, violent, gruesome content, um, you know, things that <clears throat> it's just like ratings for movies. You know, um, in Star Wars, it's interesting when, when like this is how violent things have gotten the first Star Wars movies. You know, if you remember when the stormtroopers get shot by laser beams, they just fall over. You don't see smoke coming out of them. You don't see blood coming out. Mm. When they showed the original, I'm talking about the 1977 version. Mm -hmm. When they showed that to kids recently, the kids didn't understand the stormtroopers were dead because there was no blood. There was there were no wow. holes through them, right? So that's just one example of how desensitized people get. And so when you get into things like sexual content, you know, again, it's it's essentially pushing, you know, whether it's, you know, pornography or sexually inappropriate materials or grooming children, those things now start to get normalized and they start to become, you know, if you're not careful, something that people just think is fine because they've seen it so often, they don't know that it's wrong. And that's a real problem, right? The, the problem is when, when it becomes so normalized, um, the, ch the children, you know, you know children get, get brainwashed and unfortunately, you know, as a parent, it's not realistic as a parent to think you're going to look over your kid's shoulder 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Nobody has that kind of time. Right. Right. And, and, and you know, I grew up in the 80s hearing Christian leaders who I respected saying things like, don't watch, don't go to that movie, don't watch that TV show, mm -hmm. don't listen to that music. And I get it. Okay, I get it. But you got to give me something to do. Yes. Because I can't, I can't spend eight eight hours a day outside. I'm not going to watch Andy Griffith reruns. I'm not. Mm -hmm. So right. you know we can't we can't as Christians say, well, my kid's just going to play outside all day and eat tree bark. That, that no, that that's right. not realistic. So you know, in in an age where so much happens on the mobile device, right? There have to be experiences that are not just Christian, that are not just true, but that are good, that are awesome, right. that are beautiful, engaging, fun experiences that you want to play that you can't put down that have God's truth imbibed in them. That's, yeah. and that's why we did true play. Right. And we do, we have to, every time I would say no to something, I always gave my kids a positive alternative. And so that's where this conversation is going um, because uh, you saw a need for this and yeah. tell us a bit about true play um, and what you're providing there and how that could be an answer for our moms. Yeah. True play is, is really a fantastic entertainment experience for not just for kids, but for families. So it's, it's one app you download it on your phone or your tablet. We, okay. I, whether you have an Apple phone or a Google, you know, Android phone or, or tablet. Um, and it's a bunch of games, a bunch of comics, a bunch of videos, you know, it's hours and hours and hours of content, different experiences that you, that, that you can have, 
Um, everyone in your family gets an account. You, you pay one price, everybody gets to use it, but they get your own account. So nobody uses your points or your, you know, takes your <laughs> or your victories, right? Lives. Exactly. <laughs> Reset your levels. You don't have to worry about that. But everything that we do is made to be fun. It's made to be beautiful, but our guarantee, our promise to parents and anybody who uses it is it contains God's truth. So here's what I mean. When I say fun, our top six games, if if you, because we, we actually have looked at the results of this, if you, we have, we have, I think, I think it's 11 games now on our platform. And actually next week we're launching King David's Battles. So it'll be 12, I believe. Mm. If you take our top six games, and I'm pretty sure King David will be on there. So it'll be top seven games, all right, including King David's Battles. Your kid has, has true play and chooses one of our best games versus any one of the top 10 games on the app store, meaning things like uh, Minecraft or Roblox. If they play both of those games, they'll be more likely to come back and play one of our games than one of the top 10 app store games. That's how much they enjoy it. it we, we, we have this world-class people. They've spent a lot of time crafting the stories, crafting the gameplay experience. Um, two, it's beautiful. And you're, you're welcome to take a look at, at the, the graphics at trueplaygames.com. Um, but three, everything we do contains God's truth. So some of our games are Stained Glass and King David's Battles, where you play stories out of the Bible. Hmm. Other games are this brand new universe we've created called the Rimverse, which is you might on my T-shirt, you might see a little girl with a bunny rabbit in a tiger costume or a skunk <laughs> with a crocodile rocket suit. And so these are characters who have their very unique personalities. They live in a world where the Bible is is true and God is real, but there's also real evil and there's bad guys and there's mm. you know battles and obstacles right. to overcome. And uh, some of the kids like Maple is one of our stars. She's the bunny rabbit in a tiger costume. She all in on all in believer in God tries to do the right thing, but she's very headstrong and doesn't really care about other people's opinions. You know, not always right, but never in doubt kind of approach. Um, <laughs> And there's another one, Lucas, who's the the skunk with the crocodile rocket suit. You know, Lucas is doesn't know who God is, and he his brother died a year ago, and he's still kind of processing that grief. Um, he's on the autism spectrum, like a lot of kids are today, and so he goes on this journey. Now he's on this journey with spaceships and you know laser beams and bad guys, and it's just grandiose wow. adventure. But in his adventure, he's searching for his dead brother because he doesn't understand the concept of death. But he learns who God is through that process. Mm -hmm. And so the characters are, they're they are going through things that kids go with today. There's another kid whose parents are divorced and she's getting bullied at school. Somebody said, well, how come you're you know, talking to kids about divorce? Because a lot of kids have divorced parents, unfortunately. Right, 50%, sure. Right. And, yeah. and, and it, you know, it's saying, hey, you know, she's getting so beat down by life and has to learn your identity is not who God says, sorry, is not who people say you are, who bullies say you are, or who the enemy says you are. Your identity is who right. God says you are. And we talk about identity a few minutes ago. We're in an identity mm -hmm. crisis. Children are in an identity sure we crisis. Are. Right? Yeah. In our culture. No, no, no. If people understood, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. Right? Jesus so Christ. Positive loves you. messages yeah. are constantly coming yes. at the kids instead yes. of really a lot of death and darkness because right. they're there's, I don't know, you know, video games that really share hope, you know, right. but that's right. what yours is. Right. right. And it's, it's, pod, you're right. It's, it's about hope, but it's also about being grounded in God's truth, right? It's being about mm -hmm. being grounded in the Bible. And I think a lot about, you know, we talked about kind of our childhoods and growing up in the eighties. So, you know, I grew up with, you know, Luke Skywalker and, and, you know, Superman and some of these <laughs> heroes. Now, were they yeah. Christian stories? No, but they were very heavily virtuous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know the the you know the light and dark of Star Wars and you know Superman right. being a a Jesus uh you know almost a kind of very certain parallels to Jesus that you know Superman there's there's a lot of good essays about that um and so the point is that they were very heavily Christian influenced and in fact you know of course Dean Kane who's been a wonderful friend of True Play you know is, is Superman you know played Superman very famously very successfully and so there, there's a lot of that underpinning that happened but today for kids. Um, there's so much hopelessness. There's nice. so much sarcasm. There's so much bitterness. There's so much anger. And yeah. there's so much, um, again, because of this identity crisis, the problem that you find is anxiety, suicide, and depression rates are all-time highs for kids, all-time yeah. high. There, there's an article that just came out. I was reading last week that this generation, Generation Z, is having, they're, they're having a hard time um, 
you know, launching their careers. They're having a hard time building relationships because all they've been taught, you're on a screen 52 and a half hours a week, and all you're taught is, you know, greed and lust and hopelessness and right. meaninglessness and despondency. Right. Yeah. Well, of course you're going to get depressed if that's all you know. Sure. Sure. I know th that you talk about uh, 62% of Americans over 40 believe in God, but only 32% yeah. of our children believe in God. Um, so that is another lost, a incredibly important lost um, teaching to our kids that God exists and that there is hope. That's what I love to hear about how children will be reinforced by what their parents are, are saying instead of countering it. Right. That's yes. what we see in the count, the, the culture, they counter everything that the parents teach yeah. and yes. they, and they take pride in that. You're right. And it's, it's sad that, that these media companies and these plat, these technology platforms encourage you and almost force you almost to spend your money and your time in their platforms just to then teach your children everything that you yes. taught them. And that frankly, your mama taught you when you were a kid, <laughs> right. right? The opposite of, Mm -hmm. And then when something happens, uh, a, a child suicide, a, a, you know, drug addiction, right. a school shooting, they blame the parents. Oh, well, where are the parents? No, no, no. It's like, it's like, remember when, when there was poison in, in Flint, Michigan in the water, mm -hmm. would you blame a parent because they let the kid drink tap water? No, you pay the water bill. Your kid gets you drink clean water. That's right. the deal. The fault is the fault of the people poisoning the water and the regulatory authorities. So, so when kids get inculcated with all this toxic, media content, whether it's from social media platforms or games or, or, or YouTube or anything else. I don't blame the parents. Mm -hmm. I blame the media plat, the people who made the content and the platforms that pushed it and who put no guardrails up. And so that's why at true play, our whole perspective is we, you know, true play is not one game. It's dozens and dozens and dozens of experiences, games, cartoons, comics with more stuff coming all the time where you've got a lot of options, you can play with your family. But most importantly, everything we do is going to give you hope and positivity and encouragement with God's truth. Because if you, you talked to, you mentioned, you know, thir only 31% of kids believe in God. Well, no wonder suicide rates are all-time highs. Because exactly. if, you, if you fundamentally believe yeah. that we're just animals and we're floating around in this meaningless ether, mm -hmm. th that what that gets you to philosophically Mm -hmm. is that life is ultimately hopeless. And you can look at the life that, right. I mean, I read Darwin in college and Nietzsche, the, where not only what those guys believe, but how their lives ended. I mean, go read yeah. the stories. It's not pretty. They, you know, they wind up dying in depression and isolation um, because that's where, that's where godlessness- That's where it takes you. you. Yeah. That's where it takes you, yeah. What about this? Um, I have this quote from you that you talk about how gaming is ideal for an exploration of faith. I'd like for you to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing. So we talked about different media forms, movies and TV shows and yeah. you know radio and, and every, look, every media, books, of course, every media form has a whole lot of, you know, has its own specialness and its own uniqueness. But the difference with games are they're interactive, right? You, you make a choice in the game and it affects the way the game goes for you. Right. And so, you know, think about this. You know how when you think about child development or even teaching at college, there's, you know, some learn by by reading, some learn by hearing, sure. some learn by doing, right? Well, gaming is in some ways very similar to doing, right? Because you're taking actions and you're learning from the actions you take and you it's a, it, you develop these mini skills, you know, just like if you've seen kids play some video games that you can't master, well, because they've developed this almost like this mini skill set to mm -hmm. excel at a game. So you develop this interaction with the game and because of the choices you make and the things you accomplish, the game has a different outcome for you. And so when you're thinking about spiritual growth and development, whether it's for a child or for an adult, because, you know, as a Christian, we, we all are on a journey of spiritual growth and development, even as, even as adults, right? Right. You learn from the interactions you have, from the choices you make and, and from the responses that come back. And so the stories, as we tell them in the games, they unfold as you make choices in the game and as the game progresses. So, Bob, question to that is, do you think that you can actually maybe change the culture through video gaming with positive? I mean, we, we think what so. kind of what kind of impact do you think that can make? I mean, that's that's we your so. that's the kids. Yeah. yeah, 
We think so. And we'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you why, because I think God has called, even as dark as things mm-hmm. look for this generation, you know, 31% of kids believe in God and anxiety, suicide, and depression rates at all time highs for the first time in America. Well, for the first time since the 1940s, less than half of Americans go to church. So it's tempting for Christians to think, gosh, I'm either going to give up or go hide my fallout shelter because the apocalypse is next week. I don't right. believe either of those two things. I think that God has called us to be salt and light because he said mm-hmm. that, right? He said, Amen. go forth and, and spread the gospel. And that can look like being a witness to a friend. And that can look like uh, preaching. And that can look like being a youth pastor. And that can look like making video games. And, you know, Jesus um, always met people where they were. Well, in 2024, our kids are on screens. That's it. And, and so, and we know, we know yeah. that video games entertainment have made an impact for the negative, right? Because we we just talked right. about the, the depression rates, the suicide rates, the you know the violence, the sexual content, how that sexual mores, uh, yeah, mores meaning uh, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, how right. much that has changed mm-hmm. because of entertainment. Mm-hmm. Well, so thus thus we can make a big massive change based on the games they play, the videos yeah. they watch, the book, the comics they read the entertainment they consume. And our, our dream is to see kids go from, you know, not 30, but not 40, not 50, but over half of kids believing in God in this country. Again, it would change a whole generation. It would also change the world because yeah. you'd have a group of You're people. Right. Who you wouldn't have to fight about um, what life was all about, mm-hmm. what meaning was and what truth was. Right. right? And, and, and you'd have more people inspired to go do what God called them to do and be who God called them, who he created them to be. Absolutely. And that is foundational. That's building blocks on our kids. And, you know, we know how um, the world does all this subliminal messaging. And I don't want to say this is subliminal, but it's positive. And I really do believe that we need um, cultural parallels in everything. When the world decides that this is going to be the entertainment, we need to say, no, this is entertainment. And we need to have those options available for our kids. And I do believe that we can change our culture um, by investing in all of these certain things that our kids will um, be attracted to. So how do we get true play? Tell us again, uh, uh, just uh, what are the range, the um, age ranges too? Yeah, we find, so at true play games, you're welcome to check out our website at trueplaygames.com. Okay. We serve, we really serve families. I mean, it's interesting. We'll, we'll say, Hey, look, five to 12 years old. We have some kids who are a little younger who enjoy it. We also have teenagers. We also have kids who are like in their 30s and 40s, if you know what I mean, who enjoy it, right? There's <laughs> there's a lot of us, you know, look, I'm in the video game business. I enjoy playing video games. I'm happy to admit it. Not everybody. What's your favorite game on uh, there? Maple. Yeah. So, so okay. there's a game called Maple in the Forest of Words. And so Maple, I kind of mentioned her personality. Yeah. The story in Maple, it's, it's uh, the, the team did a phenomenal job. In okay. Maple... Um, she rushes into the forest to rescue this lost child. She's heard these rumors and there's this forbidden forest. You're not supposed to go in, but she doesn't care because she's, and she rescues this kid and they, the forest is, has been deteriorated. There's these nasty monsters there. The trees are dying. They, they get to a point where they don't hear birds anymore. All the birds have stopped singing. So things are dying and decaying. And they find out through the adventure that there's this evil queen who's confiscated all the Bibles. Oh boy. And she's twisted and manipulated the meaning of words. <laughs> and so so it's kind of seeing what happens in a society when truth is taken away. Yeah. Um, and so and, and it's it's a beautiful game and the, the it's it's really it's called Maple funny. Maple and the Force of Words. Yeah. And it's also yeah. funny the 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 actors that you know, we have these actors in the game, you know, doing the voicing the characters. They all did a great job. Um, and it's funny, the interactions between them are funny because Maple is She's incredibly earnest, but also very headstrong. And she rescues this boy named Oliver, who's adopted. And he's he's very nerdy, and he's a little he's very a little bit callow. Like he's not as willing to go into danger. And he's not he kind of thinks maybe God exists, but maybe not. He's not really sure. And he's a scientist, and all my science books don't always talk about God. So he and Mabel have a lot of fun interactions. And there's a narrator who the, who has a, a very deep voice, you know, like the NFL film announcer. <laughs> and so they can hear his voice, but they don't understand that there's an audience. So he, the, the narrator talks to the audience and the kids hear him, but they don't like they don't get why he's repeating things that they're already doing. It doesn't make any sense to them because they're inside the environment. So it's it's a fun it's a, it's a fun way they they told the story. I have. Um, that sounds really good. Um, I would love for you to just in closing here, 
just, um, I'm kind of just thinking if I was a parent and my kids were on this gaming system and they are attached to this gaming system and they love these games and I'm trying to do a culture shift in my home yeah. and I'm trying to move my kids over. What is your advice? Because kids are kind of attached to their games. Uh, yeah. How do we make that transition? I'd love for you to give some advice to our moms on that. Yeah, I, I would I would suggest a couple things. You know, obviously, I don't think all video games are bad. Mm -hmm. um, I think some are, and, and, but I don't think it's any different than books. You know, I, somebody asked me one time, well, why do you even want to have kids play games? I said, hey, look, if you walk into your house tonight and your kid's reading a pornographic magazine, would you throw away all your books? No, you get rid of the magazine. Right. Okay. It, so it's right. It's the message contained. It's not about the medium. So my recommendation in for people in the situation you described would be one, you got to figure out which of the games are acceptable and which aren't. You know, there's a lot of fun sports games, racing games, you know, again, things like Zelda, you know, generally fairly benign. There may be a couple exceptions to that. Um, then. I would also think about, you know, how you limit the time, which is something that we do in our house, right? You limit the time that, 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 and then the other thing is, you know, honestly, give true play a shot. You know, the, the, the games, our top seven games, like I said, outperform the top 10 games on the app store. So, and we have a lot of testimonials, you know, parents talking about how much their kid learned or what something they wound up going mm -hmm. and repeating that they heard one of the characters say that's, Either or maybe they come back to mom and dad and say, hey, this happened in the game. I'm yeah. just wondering about that. It does probably promote good thinking, good discussion, good topics. And that's right. And there's opportunities for mom and dad to compete with their kids for high scores in some of the games. So there's <laughs> there's some some ways you can get involved if, if you want to have something fun to do with your kids, too. Oh, well, thank you, Brent. We surely appreciate you stopping by. I know you're busy, um, you know, saving the world through video games here. And I don't mean, and I don't mean that, uh, you know, uh, nonchalantly, because I really do think that this is a very important initiative and we've got to go where our kids are. We've got to be in the culture and we've got to have great alternatives. Amen. Well, I appreciate that. It's great to be with you guys today and also very much appreciate what you guys do um, at your organization. You know, it's, there just aren't enough enough adults standing up for our children. Yeah. And I think the work you guys are doing is really important. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the gaming world. Sounds good. Look forward to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Well, moms, check it out. Trueplaygames.com. Uh, we all know our kids are on them. So let's figure out what are some great alternatives. We so appreciate Brent stopping by and sharing his vision for helping to really impact this culture in a positive way through video gaming. So again, trueplaygames.com, check them out. Also, I do want to remind everybody again to make sure that you sign up at uh, momsamerica.us, sign up for our weekly newsletter so we can communicate with you, uh, share our blogs, our podcasts, our webinars, our seminars. You do all that through our website. We also have a forum on our website where you can get specific information um, uh, regarding specific things that you're interested in, whether it's cottage meetings, whether it's webinars, seminars, running for school board, all of that information is there again at momsforamerica.us. When you are there and you've signed up for the newsletter, um, also check out our signature program, which is called the Cottage Meetings. It's 12 lessons that will inspire and educate you about America's history so you can share those principles of liberty and hope in your home and in your community. Again, this program with all the other resources are all on our website. So please, please join the movement there. We say this every week from parental rights to public policy, from the kitchen table to the boardroom. We here at Moms for America have it all. All right, moms, uh, this week, I always say this every week too, that liberty begins at home and that you are the heartbeat of America. I do say that every week because I want to remind you how uh, important you are how valuable you are and how you are raising the next generation and impacting our culture and you are saving America. So we are here always to inspire um, and educate you moms. So please join us again next week. Share this podcast, obviously, but join us next week for another informative, uh, inspiring discussion with moms just like you, for moms just like you. So every once in a while we have the dads on too. Um, and as I always say, let's keep changing our world one home at a time and I will be talking to you soon. Uh, see you next week.